Welcome to Fertility Friday Q&A episode four, where we talk about all of your fertility questions. Hey friends, welcome back. I am so excited to be answering some of your top fertility questions. I am Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist that's a fertility doctor. I took a little bit break from the channel just because I needed to get some space from some of the haters, but I'm back because my primary goal and objective in this space is to educate you. So let's dive in and go over some of your questions. First, I just want to say thanks for being here, and I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and help me spread my message of fertility awareness, education, and empowerment. Let's go. Question one, could you explain what happens on cycles that do not result in conception or implantation? Did the sperm never meet the egg, or was it an egg or sperm chromosome abnormality that resulted in an embryo that couldn't implant? I'm trying to understand why it takes most couples six months to a year to conceive even if everything is working normally? This is a really great question. The short answer is we don't know. One of the top reasons we do think is chromosome abnormalities. Let's use the egg alone and not even talk about the sperm. As women age, the eggs inside their ovaries get older and the chromosomes start to break down. So the chromosomes inside our eggs essentially break down, the proteins degrade, and so you have an increased prevalence of chromosome abnormalities as we age. Now, everybody has some chromosome abnormalities, and it's the number one cause of miscarriage, but we do think that some of these chromosome abnormalities simply can't fertilize, can't implant, therefore don't even make it to the pregnancy zone. Sometimes it's a timing thing. Sperm and egg couldn't come together. Sometimes the sperm couldn't fertilize the egg. Sometimes perhaps there are toxins inside your body that are preventing either fertilization or early embryo development. So the reality is we don't know. What we do know is that even at your peak, peak, peak fertility when you're in your 20s, you do not have more than a 25% chance of getting pregnant per month. And then it drops from there. So that an average woman who's in her mid thirties is going to have about a 10 to 12% chance per month. Huge change. So most people who are in their twenties or their early thirties do have about a 20 to 25% chance per month. Therefore, after six months, most people will get pregnant. Yes, another group of people will get pregnant in those secondary six months, but you are starting to enter into the world of it taking longer than it should. The average timeline to get an evaluation is if you've been trying to get pregnant for 12 months and you've not achieved a pregnancy, you should definitely see a fertility doctor or your OBGYN if you're less than 35. Because we don't have as much time to achieve our goals, if you're 35 and older and you've not achieved success in six months, you should go get an evaluation at that time period. What steps should my husband be taking to ensure our best chances of conceiving? I love this. I love getting the partners involved. So let's think about this. What is good for your body is good for your sperm. So what we really want to do is focus on taking in good things and avoiding toxins. So number one, what we want to do is take a multivitamin. We want to eat a diet, high in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and we want to limit processed foods, artificial sugars. We also want to try to maintain a healthy weight and exercise. We want to avoid toxins, specifically cigarette smoke and marijuana. We know that those can be bad. In the current world, a COVID infection can impact sperm counts. And I do have a video on this. So I, so you want to avoid getting a COVID infection. Of course, the best way you can do that is by getting the COVID vaccine. So strongly encourage that for any couples who are trying to get pregnant. There are some other things that may make a difference. So we really want to avoid heat exposure to the testes. The scrotum is outside the body to keep the testes at a lower temperature than our core body temperature. So we don't want to do things that are going to submerge them in higher levels of heat. So hot tub saunas are big off limit things, at least not for everyday use. Riding a motorcycle or heavy intense cycling, not your 30 minute Peloton, but like competitive cycling outdoors, lots and lots. Another big one is no testosterone. Very often, well-meaning providers will put a patient on testosterone for fatigue or libido or difficulty losing weight. The problem is testosterone is essentially male birth control. And I see a good number of patients who are trying to get pregnant who come in and the male partner is on testosterone without any knowledge that that was dropping his sperm count. What happens is testosterone and sperm are typically made together. And so when the body sees a high testosterone level, it presumes there's a high level of sperm and it stops sending out the hormones that make both testosterone and sperm or 
FSH and LH from the brain. So testosterone can drop your sperm counts dramatically. You can even have azoospermia or no sperm in the ejaculate. Additionally, we want to make sure that other medical conditions are well controlled like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. We want to make sure there's no difficulty with intercourse, erection, ejaculation, libido, and that there's no abnormalities to the scrotum like scrotal swellings or pain or discomfort. All of those things would warrant an earlier consultation with your doctor. Does ovulating early in your cycle affect your chance to conceive each month? Ovulation on day 8 to 10 of a 20 age 29 day cycle, so a short follicular phase and a long luteal. What are causes of a long luteal phase, short follicular, but still regular cycles? So a couple things here. I love cycle tracking. I think it does really help when you're trying to get pregnant. A quick overview, the follicular phase is the first part of the cycle and the luteal phase is the second part of the cycle, meaning that in the follicular phase, the brain is sending out FSH, which is causing a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen. Then it ovulates. Ovulation could be its own phase. And then you have the luteal phase, which is where that follicle that ovulated turns into a corpus luteum and makes progesterone, which is essential to support an ongoing pregnancy. Now, when there is no pregnancy because pregnancy rescues the corpus luteum, then what happens is that corpus luteum dies, you get a drop in your progesterone, therefore you get a period. Typically, the luteal phase is set, and it should be on average about 12 to 14 days. Shorter luteal phases than that may represent a difficulty with ovulation, and warrant an evaluation to see if there's any hormonal disturbances or ovulation disorders. However, a short follicular phase is the number one sign and sometimes the only clinical sign we have of having low ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve is based on how many eggs you have left. So think about my favorite analogy, that is you have your ovary, inside your ovary is a vault where all your eggs are kept. You're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have and then they come out of the vault over the course of your lifetime and when the vault is empty, you're out of eggs. Every month, a group of eggs comes out of the vault. From these eggs, one is chosen to ovulate, the rest of them die, next month a new group, and the size of the group correlates with the number of eggs you have left. Meaning if you're young and you have a lot of eggs, you have a high AMH. If you're any age and you're running out of eggs, you're going to have a low AMH or a lower number of eggs coming out of the vault. Now on a physiologic level, from all those eggs, each egg is inside a follicle, the brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, which stimulates an egg to grow. The egg and the brain are best friends. And so what happens is when there's a lower egg count, very often the brain will send out a, a stronger signal or a higher level of FSH. This is why before we could check AMH, we would check day three labs such as FSH and estradiol to try to see if a woman was having a low egg count. The reason why is when you have a lower egg count, your body would send out a higher FSH signal earlier, therefore recruiting an egg faster and having a higher estradiol. So we do worry that in this process, when there's fewer eggs that come out of the vault, the brain sends out a stronger signal of FSH, you grow that first egg faster, and you're releasing it faster. So anybody who has a short follicular phase, I do recommend asking your fertility doctor or your OBGYN to check your ovarian reserve or to draw an AMH blood test. And I do talk about AMH in another video. You can go learn more about ovarian reserve. Clinically, if you're not running out of eggs, having a short follicular phase typically does not matter, but I would wanna make sure that your tracking system is accurate, and sometimes you can do this by monitoring a cycle with your doctor. REI say one of the most important things is time when it comes to fertility, yet OBGYN office says 12 months before they will do anything. Seven months of, seven months of trying to conceive, 29-year-old with abnormal modern fertility results, low AMH, high FSH, and high prolactin. Can people in this situation skip over seeing an OBGYN and make an appointment with an REI? Absolutely. First of all, anybody can skip over having their workup done by an OBGYN. OBGYN offices can totally do this. And so if you live in an area where there's not many REIs, your OB can, but OBs are busy doing OB stuff. And so very often they're also delivering, doing lots of major surgery and dealing with the complexity of appointments. Just in comparison, my new patient visits are an hour long and they can be really in depth. So your fertility doctor typically has more time. We don't require referrals unless your insurance requires them, but typically you can schedule an appointment with an RE at your own wish. Yes, the standard recommendation is not to do a fertility evaluation until 12 months in somebody who's under 35 if everything is normal. So if everything is not normal, then that does not hold true anymore. So in this circumstance where you have abnormal test results, absolutely you need a full fertility evaluation right away. And as you just heard me say in the prior question, this is concerning that you have low ovarian reserve and you don't have the same time to conceive your family as you should. You also need that high prolactin evaluated because things can cause high prolactin. 
You could have a pituitary tumor called a prolactinoma. It could be from time of day. So we often recommend a repeat in the early follicular phase when you're fasting in the early morning because prolactin varies throughout your day. It varies with food and with exercise. It could also be due to medications that you're taking, nipple stimulation, a lot of different things. So you wanna make sure we understand what's causing that hyperlactin and it gets treated. This can also cause some abnormal ovulation, short cycles or irregular cycles and make it harder to get pregnant. So if anything is wrong, you should not wait the 12 months if you're less than 35. If your periods are irregular, if you have severe pain, if you can't have intercourse, if you have abnormal test results from some other testing source, please go see Fertility right away. Okay guys, I hope this was helpful. I love answering these questions. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more, you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or listen to the As a Woman podcast for more in-depth fertility-related information. Thanks, friends.